Welcome to Aging Gayfully. We're about adventure, leisure, travel, being a citizen of the world, traveling to destinations, and being a part of the global community as we age and prosper in body, mind, and spirit. Welcome to Aging Gayfully. I'm Josh, and I am somewhat begrudgingly back in the United States. Oh, Josh, you know, it, it's okay. You know, you've got a great family and live in a great town, and they're with you, but I hear you. I'd like to be across the pond, too. And so who are you? You didn't oh, introduce well, I yourself. Say, I, that's right. So my Chris, Christopher, aging gay. What I, I'm you know, today, I think I'm just going to be Chris. I'm just kind of. I'm hanging out with Josh. <laughs> well, hello, Chris. We missed one week of recording, and well, because you're across the pond, you know. I, I was. Yeah. I was, and and let's talk about that. This is, after all, a travel show, or one of the things that we are is a travel show. One of the things we talk about, yeah. Very and cool. me and and the little family went to London for about eight days last week, and wow, the things that we saw. Different, isn't it? It is. It's different in in some lovely ways. Yeah. And before we left, we we did a show on. How we are two cultures divided by a common language. We did a show on um, British slang, and so they, you know, it's just the the fun little differences. Like you know, the, we have elevators, they have lifts. We have you know baby buggies, they have prams. We have a president. We I don't know what they have. So it's just a, a bunch of fun little differences. They have a monarch. Well, they have a prime minister. And a prime minister. But, and then uh, apparently, the, basically, the the Cardassians, you know, yeah. are <laughs> are the royal family of the Cardass. I think it's Cardassians. Yeah, I think Cardassians are the 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 bad guys in the Star Trek universe. We so. got somebody here that's trying to be a royal family. Yeah, he's a royal something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, have you ever been to London? I have. It's been a while. Richard and I went in two thousand and six. It was. It was. Um, uh, it was. I've always wanted to go back. Uh, it was terrific flying into Heathrow and and then getting in one of the taxis that you've always seen <laughs> on TV. But in my first experience, uh, just getting in that taxi and <laughs> and the uh, um, everything is it forced me being dyslexic it was i was like off the charts there with the with the driver's side on the it's everything on the other side and then driving on the other side of the street it was um uh, it was a experience that i have never forgotten london's great england is great i loved it i absolutely loved it do you mind the gap um, we I did not mind the gap. Well, I did mind the gap, but I didn't mind the gap, if you know what I mean. Um, I saw a thing, uh, and apparently, you know, the, the, the mind the blank is all over, because when we got on the bus, uh, there was a sign that said, mind your head. And so I had to get a picture of Amanda standing next to that. Um, but we flew into Gatwick, which is have, quite a bit flew south. Out of Gatwick, that's south. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Marvelous airport. I, actually, I think it's a little bit better than Heathrow, but that's just. Oh, is it? I I found well, of course that's I'm I'm going back now, eighteen years. So. Oh, okay. Well, I, I'm gonna this next time that I'm gonna go in an, in a couple of weeks, I'm going back. Jet setter. Yeah, that's right. I'm gonna fly into Gatwick and out of Heathrow, so I'll be able to kind of see you get pictures. The difference. We can have a. We can have a recap. That's right. Well, of course we will. Yeah. Well, isn't that what this is? <laughs> Um, but one of the interesting things is uh, the the jet lag, both going and coming back. Actually, the jet lag going wasn't all that bad, you know. And my understanding with jet lag is when you travel east, which is what I did, obviously to to get there because I didn't go the other way around the world. It's worse than than going west, um, as far as how your circadian rhythms get all screwed up. All I know is that we got back Sunday and around Wednesday of this week, it really hit me. And I didn't expect the delay 
but it really, really hit me. And Amanda had told me last time she went um, over to London last year um, that the jet lag coming back was delayed. Did you know that that there's a delay? I, th- I think yeah, I think it, it it impacts people differently. And I, I and I, I don't have any scientific studies in front of me, but I I have heard from numerous travelers that some experience it uh, a few days after. Some don't experience it all. Some experience it immediately. I think it's just, uh, it's unique to each individual. I'm guessing that the, maybe the, the more seasoned and experienced you are, in other words, the older that you are, that any sort of change. That's a nice sleep. way of, that's a nice way yeah. of saying it. <laughs> well, yes, I, I, I know the right words, um, that it has potential as with any sort of uh, drastic change has a potential to affect you more. And so I, I, I was kind of, um, for through Wednesday and Thursday kind of, you know, in a different zone of, of consciousness and it wasn't all that pleasant now. Well, didn't have anything to do, didn't have any, anything to do with having to go back to work. <laughs> I'm certain that that didn't help. <laughs> Um, listen, so you've got going back to work, you've got jet lag, and then you've got the, the post traveling blues, which are, are natural. If you have any sort of a that, pleasant experience, you know, one of the rules of thumb, if you, if it's so, if it's possible for you, for anybody that after you've come back from a wonderful trip, uh, plan your next one, have something to, to look forward to. And, and look what you look at you you've come back and you're you're you're, you're returning so you you've planned your next trip you're actually doing it it's funny that you should say that though because that's life right there especially as we get older we talked a couple of weeks ago about making sure that we slow the time down and that, right. that we don't all of a sudden fun. just yeah wake up and discover the 10 years have passed. Well, one of the ways to slow time down is to always have something to look forward to in the future. Plan your next trip, plan your next vacation, plan right. a spa night, plan a night out, but always have some plans that you can look forward to. Right. And that I think is one of those things to help time slow down and help your life feel fuller. Well, this doesn't relate really to travel, but uh you know, I had, when I had my last tattoo finished, I said, I got to plan my next one. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. I mean, I used to do that when I bowled. I always, I always knew when the next tournament was. Plan your next frame. Now, isn't that, look at that right off the top of your bald head. That was like <laughs> off the charts. Plan your next frame. I think that's a, I think that's a future episode on aging gayfully. Very specific segment of our audience. Um, Senior gay bowlers, I think they need. There to, are a lot uh, out it's there. A, it's an underserved uh, category of frame. people. Oh, geez, another, another, another scribbly note on my. What is your next frame? Oh, and uh, and then my next frame, and then query letters. We're going to be talking about that too. So, oh, very good. Let me write that down. So we got into Gatwick, and that is about an hour's worth of journey south of london and yeah. our choice was to take the tube to take a taxi or to take an uber now we had um, a couple kids with us and all of the requisite luggage and so we decided to to order up an extra large uber like a van mm-hmm. you know like a and we did it that way and i found that that if you have the ability to do that that that's the way to go Piling all of your luggage and your children up on a tube after a seven-hour flight, while we will talk about the tube system and how wonderful I found it, I don't find that very appealing. Now, I did see while we were going out and about uh, on the tube, I saw several people with luggage, so people do it. I just wanted to make the time in t- driving into London be as stress-free as possible, so Uber in this case was was very much a great decision. Well, <clears throat> thinking about <laughs> Uber really wasn't <laughs> wasn't active. Well, it wasn't even it hadn't even been created when I was there in two thousand and six. But your point is well taken because it, it, as convenient as the the tube can be, um, 
goodness, traveling with kids or just traveling with a group of people and getting off a plane, trying to figure out the directions or you're in the right spot. Sometimes it's, it's, it's a stressless experience if you just hire a car. So rideshare services are, are definitely something to look into. And I will say, just as an aside, that that if you're doing research in general in your life for rideshare services, Uber does offer extended services for seniors. And so research that, find out what it is, you know, but Uber has recognized that that seniors are a very viable market. And so they do offer rides to appointments. They offer accommodation. So that is definitely something that you want to that you want to check out. So we got to our Airbnb, and that's my next bit of of, uh, interesting advice here. For me, I enjoy seeing how people in a different culture and society live. I'm not interested necessarily in staying in a district where it's nothing but hotels and shops. If that's the kind of experience that you want, then I absolutely recommend uh, Airbnb or Verbo or any of these other home sharing services where people rent out their apartment or their house for you to be able to to book for your vacation. Now, wait a minute. I thought you had a suite at Buckingham Palace. Well, no, that would still be Airbnb. <laughs> that could that's be an Airbnb. <laughs> that's very exclusive Airbnb. It's got a very long code for you to punch in. But I very much enjoy the feeling of being home while I'm away. So if, if it's a thing that you're interested in, then then get you on the Airbnb website or have someone look it up for you and research that. The prices are often very similar. Now, the the pros are it is a home-like atmosphere. You know, they often, more often than not, have washers and dryers, which will help with your packing. Because I only packed for half of the trip, if you take my meaning. And then for for you know, we did our laundry halfway through, and that was a luxury when it came to to packing. Wouldn't it be great if we could come up with a line of disposable clothing? Doctors' offices around the globe have that. <laughs> if you want to wander around London in a smock with no back, there you go. Well, you know, the merch. That's <laughs> the aging gayfully smock. The aging gayfully smock. Backless smocks. We will crack you up. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Say no to crack is what I say <laughs> to that. Um, so if you want that experience of living in a neighborhood and seeing how people live, um, then I would recommend Airbnb. Our neighborhood was lovely. It was it was a bunch of families. We got a flat and a block of flats. There was a playground right down the street for the little one to play in. We could walk to our grocery store, and we preferred that. Now, I will say that that people who have any sort of mobility challenges or people who want to make sure to have services at their beck and call, then a hotel is the way to go, mm-hmm. right? Because you have people at the front desk who can serve you, and you have concierges who can help you with advice on how, how to travel around the town. And you have food options that are available without you having to put too much effort in. And so those would be the pros to staying in a hotel. It's just whatever you want to do. We we prefer these days Airbnbs. So how was it traveling with an eight-year-old? It was fine. He had been before. That was oh, the, so he the was, luxury. He was a seasoned traveler. He was. He had actually been one more time than I <laughs> I, that was kind of what I was trying to get to, but that is... but no, yes. really. How? how uh, what? What did? What did you have for him to be occupied on a trans transatlantic flight? The flight was marvelous. Yeah. We flew over and back on British Air on a big old plane, mm-hmm. and they have movies and tv shows and games on the seat back screen right so there's that Mm -hmm. automatically that that will take up most of the time we very intentionally chose to travel at night so he slept most of the time that helps yeah Mm -hmm. traveling back we traveled during the day and he slept most of the time because he was exhausted from the trip Mm -hmm. so traveling there was fine you know we also had a couple books for him to read but it wasn't an issue because we planned 
he planned for it. Him to be right. sleeping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then while he was there, I mean, it's just like going to, you know, when we go out here in town, you know, we make sure that we have uh, a book or coloring book or mama's phone for him to play on. And he's he's just fine. So it's very doable. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And how does he talk about his experience? I He hasn't turned in his uh, after trip essay yet, so I will let you know. Oh, well, that will when be. When he does. That would be fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you know that's one of the things while we were there we made sure that we did a lot of walking yeah. to well you're by default going to do a lot of walking but i mean that serves to to tire him out well, you know, as I long think as he's willing to walk that's one of the whole one of one of the big differences between not just london but all of europe and the and, and, and the majority of the united states it's much more walkable well, and that is the other thing that made the trip so wonderful. Traveling around the city, and of course it's a massive city, was very, very doable. And and it was a lark. It was enjoyable for me because I love a good walking city that has exceptional public transportation. Right. Now, I'm not seasoned enough to know where London's public transportation rates for, with the rest of the world, but it's certainly as good as anything that I've had here in this country, you know, and I've heretofore, I've thought that, that New York had it pretty down pat. Well, London is all that New York is, but cleaner and more polite. So of course there's the extensive tube system that it could not be easier to navigate So for two reasons. Why do they call it the tube? Um, because I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I'm sorry. I, I wasn't ready with a dirty joke. Um, <laughs> and I was well because it's because it goes underground in a in a tube in a cylinder. Right, I because, suppose. But we don't call it that here. We call it the the, the train, the subway. Subway. Yeah, subway. So it's just fun. You know, it's again those nuances, those differences. It's those little differences. Uh, sure. Mm-hmm. Now London is very active working on a step-free system for their transportation service. And so I think around a third of the the tube stations operate on this very practical philosophy that says that you shouldn't have to take stairs. And they continue to develop um, new systems and new stations. And so, of course, that means either ramps or lifts, elevators. Right. And we were in a couple of those. That's very, very helpful for accessibility issues. Um, but in general, navigating around London is made so easy in large part to the fact that we have these phones and there is an app that you can download and you just enter in where you are and where you would like to go and it tells you what bus to take, when that bus is leaving, what tube to take, when that tube is leaving. Um, it gives you alternate routes if you you know, if you want to avoid an express line or you want to avoid a local line. So number one, if if this technology is something that you feel like, you know, you can master, I highly recommend it to travel. Highly recommend it. And now I'm talking, of course, about traveling in a country that speaks the language that you speak. If you don't speak the, the local language that you're visiting, of course, this technology can be all that more right. helpful and mm-hmm. useful. Mm-hmm. The other way that this was useful is that I think I used my credit card once in London. Once. Once. And we, of course, paid for a lot of things. The way they have it now, you go to the bus, you go to the tube station, you tap your phone against this receiver, and it takes your payment. Well, don't you have to have that set up in your phone, though? You, You do. You do. Mm-hmm. I have a. I have. I only have experience with the Apple iPhones, and I have Apple Pay set up, okay. which is just the payment system through my phone that hooks to one of my credit cards. I, I haven't gotten a new credit card for that; it just hooks to my credit card, mm-hmm. and then I could just I can just tap the phone on the the little um, receiver that they have. But if you didn't have a phone, then you could just tap your credit card on that same receiver. So you go to the tube, you tap your credit card on the um, receiver on the turnstile. It lets you through. You take your trip uh, on your destination tube station. You tap again. That taps you out. And then uh, that calculates how much you owe for your trip because they do it by distance. With oh, the bus, you just tap. You tap to tap in. It's just one 
one fare that you pay, you know, however far you go, and then you're done paying. At the restaurant, more often than not, I would just tap my card or tap my phone, and I would pay. Now, making it that easy to pay and that convenient to pay is wonderful until you realize <laughs> how much you, you've you spent. And also realizing it's like that going the deal on a cruise. You, you get your yes. cruise card. And it's like, yes. it's just so easy to go up and just, do, 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 and then all of a sudden the cruise ends and you get the bill. Well, keep also in mind that for every pound that you spend, you're spending a dollar twenty six. Ouch. Which 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 sounds like, you know, whatever for a five dollar charge, but you get an eighty dollar charge and all of a sudden or an eighty pound charge and all of a sudden that's one hundred dollars. So you gotta keep that in mind. That's right. Mm-hmm. So making it easy to pay plus having an unfavorable exchange rate can really add up, and that's something you have to be super mindful of. So have you, have you calculated the expenses yet from the trip? Nope, not going to do it. Just let it just let it roll. Just no, just I'm just we're just going to pay it just off. Pay it and off and just be okay. Not look at the because yeah. what's why are we going to do that? We got to pay it off anyway. Why are we going to? Uh, why would you you know that ignorance is bliss, my friend? So I did find it to be extremely walkable, extremely easy to travel around. Tube stations everywhere. Bus stops everywhere. That's the other thing. I've taken buses in uh, New York. I've taken buses here in town. Do not like traveling by bus. In London, it was delightful. That's you, you're on the double decker buses, which is nice. Yeah. And by and large, they're very clean. I felt the same way in Spain. And I found the people to be very polite. Safer? I wasn't ever concerned. Ever. No. Now, part of that was that we didn't travel much at night because we had the little boy, right? Mm -hmm. And that everywhere we went, there was a shit ton of people. (laughs) It is kind of, it is kind of uh, crowded. (laughs) Yeah. It was uh, the, the only time where it was crowded and a little bit annoying is we made the mistake of traveling into the heart of London one evening, you know, right as work got off. And Uh. then it was, but even that was like, okay, this is this is what we should have expected, and it was fine. It's whatever. It's the reality of being in a city, you yeah. know, when people are knocking like, off work. Right. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, every, no one's acting up on the tube. It's just that we're all real close together. So it was, it was fine. So I have to ask you, do you have fish and chips? I did have fish and chips. I absolutely fell in love with pubs. Yeah. Like pub pub culture, pub, pub life culture, in, in it's, yeah, it's fun. Is a thing. Yeah. And you know, you go in and you order from the bar. So don't be the, the silly American who sits down and waits for someone to, to wait on you because you're gonna happening. be sitting for a long time. So you order from the bar, you sit down, you relax. The all the pubs that I went into were beautifully appointed. And I ordered fish and chips, and it was the best fried thing I've ever put in my mouth. Yeah, the the batter was nice and light and crunchy. They really know the how to do was, it. Oh, they do. Chips, of course, oh, are French fries. They're like steak fries. They like steak fries. Yeah, they're they're like larger, mm-hmm. larger things than like McDonald's straw fries or whatever. And I also tried mushy peas. Oh, have you heard of mushy peas? Yes, I love mushy peas. So Mushy Peas probably has the worst branding that you could possibly have. I mean, the only way it could be worse, I suppose, is if they call them shitty peas. But there there is some semblance of just if you change the color. Yes. Well, that's the thing. It's like they kind of came with my fish and chips. So I said, okay, I'm not going to definitely eat these Mushy Peas, but I'm not going to tell them not to bring it. So they bring it. And what's on the plate are these nice bright vibrant mashed up peas that it was so attractive i had to try it right it wasn't kind of greenish brown gross yeah. looking it actually looked delightful and when i did it like had a nice fresh pea taste um and also minty which i didn't expect cuz i didn't know what was in mushy peas it was wonderful i ate that right up it was so good so Open yourselves up to new experiences, even though it might seem like it ain't good. There you go. Yep, yep. So, yes, I finally had fish and chips, and it was delightful. All the food was great. 
London's an international city, you know, so you can get anything you want there. The two things that I wanted to have is I wanted to have fish and chips, and I wanted to have a curry in London because that's what you do. You go what, and you get well, a curry. And, and I think it's, you know, London is multicultural. London is multicultural. The uh, population of people from that area of Asia, like Pakistan and India, you know, it's, I think that that might be the second most prevalent ethnicity in London, uh, in England. I think that that's what I read. Whatever, the, the food is, is all over there. And so I absolutely did stop in a curry shop and had one, and it was delicious. Of course, I had paneer tikka masala. It was delicious. Do you, have you ever had paneer? No. It's like a, a, a cheese. It's a white cheese oh. that they cut into cubes. It's kind of like mozzarella. And, and then they, they season it and they, they stew it in, in masala curry sauce, and it's delicious. I would like that. We have to go I on a foodie tour of London. Yes, let me um, lose the London weight first before we go on that. <laughs> um, so by and large, and of course, visiting all of the sites that, that you would want to visit, Buckingham Palace, Big Ben, Parliament, the, um, bridge. the Globe Theater. We did not see the bridge. That's the one thing we did not see. But we did go to the south bank of yeah. of the Thames, and we saw the yeah. Shakespeare's Globe Theater, and we visited the Borough Market, which is a definite recommend. It's just this this market of hundreds of stalls, been there for since the 1700s for go on the big for a well. long time. The London Eye. London we, Eye. We saw that. It's like ginormous. N- not compelled to it's, go on. It is the biggest. I know there's a, some of these springing up around the United States, but not like not the size of, of that. Yeah, and the queue for that, basically, you're standing in line all day. So I didn't feel compelled to do that to test my fear of heights. Oh, um, here we go. A, re- a revelation here on Aging Gayfully. Josh is... Uh, Josh has a fear of heights. So how 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 high can you go before you before the fear gets in? See, I say fear of heights. I think that it's a healthy um, fear of heights. Okay. I think it's Let's it's do. a it's a healthy life sustaining fear of heights. So would you go on a roller coaster? Will you go on a roller coaster? No, 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 no. I'm past the age where my body likes roller coasters. Oh, well, I just goodness. end up feeling 60, slightly sick. The 67 year old is going on going on the rides in Disney and Epcot this week. So I'll have to. I'll give you a report. Yes, please do. Please <laughs> let us all know next week how you survived. So there you go. There's my trip to London. Uh, I 100 percent five stars recommend. Well, and there's one thing that you really that you hadn't touched on because I, I, I got to see some of the pictures, uh, all the different podcasters and the friends that you, you've acquired over the years that you got to meet in person. That was really cool in and of itself. If I were to sum up one of my main philosophies in life, it's that is there's nothing more important than the connections you make with other people. In the beginning stages of the pandemic, my wife and I started the podcast and through podcasting we've met people from around the world Mm -hmm. i say met people we have talked to them we have facetimed with them we have texted them haven't met them in person and a lot of them are from the united kingdom and these are people that as the years have gone on we text some of them every day on this trip a couple of folks came down from from Cumbria, which is at the border of Scotland on the UK side. Um, and we had several people in London. So I got to meet them face to face for the first time. It was lovely. It was delightful. And seeing sights is great, but making connections with people, that's even better. So I did. So we did. It was wonderful. And it was it, it was great to see those photos of you with hanging out with uh, with the with the, your friends and the podcasters because it really is a uh, it does make podcasting and and then of course the way the world is made up these days it does make the world a little bit smaller. It does. And we find out that we have more in common that we're, than we really ever realized before, and that's why we're doing this aging gayfully. 
Yeah, and it's a wonderful thing. It is. And if you out there have been to London and want to regale we want us to hear with we your want to stories, hear we want to hear about mm-hmm. it. So how can how can folks let us know about that? Just uh, email us at yes I am at aginggayfully dot com. That is yes I am at aginggayfully dot com. So Chris. I'm ready for us to wrap this up. However, I've done a lot of talking. Any things that you want to talk about? I'm going to Disney World. Woohoo! That's wonderful. Why are you? I'm taking my my friend who who I who I politely call. Well, he actually calls himself this, but I'm taking the 90 year old slut to uh, and a couple of friends and my roommate. We're we're going to celebrate his actual 90th birthday. He's never been to Disney World or Epcot. And we're taking the new Brightline train from Fort Lauderdale to Orlando. That was talking about setting up the train rides. That was easy peasy, Brightline. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to see what Bright, where Brightline's going to be in 50 years, but I know we're all being 50 years. <laughs> but uh, uh, real excited to do this. I haven't been to Epcot or Disney in years. and. Uh, It'd be great to see it through the lens of somebody that um, grew up um, before World War II and experienced that as a uh, um, as a young person moving around Europe and somebody that has a couple of PhDs and you wouldn't know that he was ninety by watching him and listening to him so it uh it's going to be a fun it's going to be a fun experience and we'll get him on here sooner or later (laughs) oh i would love that yeah so that's my story and i'm sticking to it well i'm sure that we'll get the update then yeah um, on our next episode how that went so until then, Chris, how can people find out more about Aging Gayfully? Go to aginggayfully.com and uh, we have some shirts and merchandise coming up and uh, it's all good. All right, folks. So until next week, uh, go out and age gayfully and mind the gap. Mind the gap. Touche. All right. Bye. Bye.